That's very kind. Thank you very much. I regard the hypothesis of the existence of God as a scientific hypothesis. And in this, I disagree with many of my scientific colleagues who feel that science and religion have absolutely nothing to do with each other, and you can be a perfectly good scientist while your religious belief is a purely private matter that has nothing whatever to do with your science. I think that's wrong because a universe with a god would be a completely different kind of universe from one without, and the difference would be a scientific difference. God, by the way, could clinch the matter in a heartbeat in his favor if he chose to intervene, for example, at this very moment. <laughs> the only one of the traditional arguments for God that is still widely used today is the teleological argument, sometimes called the argument from design. It's the famous watchmaker argument. Surely one of the most superficially plausible bad arguments ever discovered. <laughs> and it's rediscovered by just about everybody until they learn the logical fallacy of it and or they learn Darwin's brilliant alternative. In the familiar world of human artifacts, things like watches, computers, complicated things that look designed are designed. To naive observers, it seems to follow that similarly complicated things in the natural world that look designed, things like eyes and hearts, are designed too. This is not just a bad argument by analogy, it's a bad argument by statistical reasoning as well. It's fallacious, but it carries an illusion of plausibility. If you randomly scramble the fragments of an eye or a heart a million times, you probably won't hit on one that can see or pump. This demonstrates that such devices could not have been put together by chance, by random chance. And there are many people who think that the only alternative to random chance is design. Because of the lamentable scientific education of most British and American students, There are many people who simply don't know what Darwinian natural selection is, and therefore the only alternative to chance that many people can imagine is design. The English astronomer Sir Fred Hoyle dramatized his own version of that misunderstanding. He suggested that a hurricane blowing through a junkyard would be as likely to assemble by luck a Boeing 747 as that natural selection could put together life as we know it. Even before Darwin came along and gave us the answer, the impotence of the argument from design was glaring. How could it ever have been a good idea to postulate as an explanation for the existence of complex, improbable things, a designer who would have to be even more complex and improbable than that which he's being invoked to explain? The entire argument is an obvious logical non-starter, as the great philosopher David Hume realized before Darwin was born. But what Hume, what Hume didn't know was the supremely elegant alternative to both chance and design that Darwin was to give to us. Natural selection is so stunningly powerful and elegant. It not only explains the whole of life, it raises our consciousness and boosts our confidence in science's future ability to explain probably everything else. Essentially, what's wrong with creationism, stroke intelligent design, there's no difference, by the way, is that it is what the philosopher Daniel Dennett calls a skyhook. A skyhook is a great hand that comes out of the sky, unexplained, and starts manipulating things in the world. And superficially, it looks as though this great hand is explaining something. But of course, it explains nothing, because it lacks an explanation itself. That's a skyhook. The opposite of a skyhook is a crane. A crane really does do explanatory work. Natural selection is the crane par excellence. Natural selection is cumulative. It starts from simple beginnings and works up 
by gradual degrees, incremental degrees, to the prodigious heights of complexity and improbability that we see in the living world. Here's a couple of examples of the products of natural selection, of the great crane of cumulative natural selection. On, on the right is a rose thorn, an adaptation by roses to avoid being eaten, and that thorn has been carved and shaped by natural selection over many generations. On the left, those are not rose thorns, those are bugs. They too have been carved and shaped by natural selection into the shape of a rose thorn as protection against their own predators. Natural selection is not just an alternative to chance, it's the only ultimate alternative to chance that's ever been suggested. Design is an, a workable alternative, but only in the short term, because you still have to explain where the designer came from. Francis Crick and Leslie Orgel, distinguished molecular biologists, once playfully speculated that life on this planet may indeed have been designed. This is their theory of directed panspermia, whereby an alien intelligence from outer space seeded our planet with a rocket in whose nose cone were bacteria. And that's where all of life sprang from. They didn't really believe that, but they put it forward as an interesting hypothesis. It's interesting from my point of view, because I see nothing wrong with it. It could, it could be right. It seems to be very unlikely, but it could be right. But whatever else you can say, it cannot be the ultimate explanation, because you still have to explain where the alien intelligences from outer space came from. Sooner or later, that regress has got to be terminated. If the aliens from outer space were themselves seeded by another rocket from a different planet, you still haven't solved the problem. Finally, you've got to terminate the regress by postulating a crane instead of a skyhook. And the obvious crane would be evolution by natural selection. The logic of creationist arguments is always the same. Some natural phenomenon is too statistically improbable, too complex, too beautiful, too awe-inspiring to have come into existence by chance. Design is the only alternative to chance that the author can imagine. Therefore, design must have done it. And science's answer to this faulty logic is also always the same. Design is not the only alternative to chance. Natural selection is a better alternative. Notice what rotten logic it is. We have theory A and theory B. Theory A is supported by loads of evidence. Theory B is supported by no evidence at all. Now here's the key step in the argument. Four. I can't understand how theory A explains phenomenon X. Therefore, theory B must be right. <laughs> 